Hi, my name is Zach Smith, and I am 33 years old. I have been married to my beautiful wife, Mandy, for 11 years. We have three children, Lizzie, Jake, and Luke. And this is my story. I met Jesus when I was five years old. I grew up as the son of missionary parents in Ecuador, where I lived for 15 years. I went to college in Arizona, where I met my wife. For the next 10 years, we traveled around while I worked in the information technology field. We served in our local church, and I attended seminary. I often thought about working in full-time ministry, but no opportunities seemed right. I was told about a job here at New Spring Church helping with information technology. It was perfect, an IT job at an amazing church. I took the job and started working in October of 2008. For several months, life was very good and we were very happy. In May of 2009, at age 32, I was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer. Immediately, I had surgery to remove a foot and a half of my large intestine and a lemon-sized tumor. I was told that cancer had spread to my spleen and to my liver. Chemotherapy was on the horizon. This was all a very sudden shock to me. I had always been very healthy, and I found myself very confused. Why did I have cancer? Had I done something wrong to cause it? Was this a result of many years of sinful living in my past? I was working at a church and serving God. Where did I go wrong? But thankfully, the confusion quickly turned to hope. I knew that God had a plan for my life. I did not understand why I had cancer, but I knew that God was in charge. For three months, I underwent a horrible chemo regimen. Afterwards, I had a scan done, and the results were great. There was no cancer found in my body. We celebrated God's healing and God's faithfulness. And the next few weeks of my life were some of the best, as I celebrated being cancer-free. But another scan one month later showed that the cancer had reappeared this time in my abdominal cavity. I was devastated. Why was it back? Everything was just starting to make sense, but the reoccurrence of cancer caused even greater confusion. I resumed chemotherapy and did more tests. The cancer is now growing and getting worse. Unfortunately, the chemo drugs are no longer effective in my abdomen, and surgery is not an option due to the degraded state of my liver. Medically speaking, there is nothing more for me. And medically speaking, I probably will not live to 2011. The Bible says in Matthew 7:11 that God gives good things to those who ask. God cannot give me a bad gift. And it is through that lens that I can say that cancer is the best thing that has ever happened to me. I am a better husband and a better dad, a better boss and a better employee, a better friend and a better follower of Jesus. And through cancer, God has shown me some amazing things about himself. Those are indeed great gifts. I still have questions about cancer, why it went away and why it came back. I do not understand, but I know that God is in charge. I am praying for God to heal me. That is my desire. I want to walk my daughter Lizzie down the aisle. I want to watch my sons, Jake and Luke, become men. I want to grow old with Mandy and I want to live my life with my friends here at work. But I may not be able to work for very much longer. And I may have just celebrated my last Christmas with my family. This I do know. If God chooses to heal me, then God is God and God is good. If God chooses not to heal me and allows me to die, God is still God and God is still good. To God be the glory. The best part of the day is when all the kids have come home and maybe we don't have a lot of practices and 
um, things to go to. So we get to come home and they get their homework done right away. And then we just have the evening to spend together and cook dinner together and watch a TV show and just enjoy each other. I don't get to do that as often as I would like. Maybe, we probably get to do that twice a week, maybe three times if we're really lucky. So I think that's why I value it so much. My kids do too. They would rather be at home on the couch, just enjoying each other than they would anywhere else. It used to be hard, like when all the kids went to bed and it was just me, um, but I've gotten more comfortable in that, so it doesn't feel as as weird. Zach and I used to really look forward to that time where we could just, you know, put the kids to bed and spend the time watching TV, sit on the couch, which is probably why I love that with my kids now. Having them around me every day reminds me so much of him in, in every way. Sometimes my heart is just so full and I'm so thankful that God's given me three kids that remind me so much of him because he's not forgotten or lost. He's like right there with me. I started taking drama class in sixth grade because there were only a few electives that we could choose from and I really didn't want to take art because everybody was taking art. So I just signed up for drama because I was like, you know, whatever. And it turned out that I loved it with all my heart. Okay, your spots to run it from the top of the scene. Thank you. Famous last words. Oh, the Lizzie loves theater and drama. Um, I think when she's been um, cultivating that, she realizes that's where she feels the most comfortable. Just see her just light up when she gets on stage and is able to take on a different character. Wait, I'm not a monster, I'm a little girl. Okay, a very big little girl. Help, help, there's a very big little girl in my house. I and love I being part of like acting and being someone who you're not for a little bit and it's just great. Uh, the best part of an ordinary day is probably coming home from school and playing Xbox. Because usually, um, like school, it's not always that good. Especially math, but that's a new, that's a different story. Jake likes a lot of the same things that Zach did when it comes to food or what video games he plays or the types of TV shows he likes to watch. And I definitely think he's taken a lot of that on to stay close to what felt right, and what felt you know like it made sense. I'm number six, and I play 12 and under. I play the, hmm, I normally play midfield. Sometimes I play defense. Luke is so funny in soccer because at the particular level of soccer that he's playing, you can't slide tackle. And when he first started playing, he accidentally did that and realized that he loves it. So he was just slide tackling left and right and just sweeping out these kids' feet from under them. And he kept getting penalties for doing that, but he just loved it so much that I think he couldn't, he couldn't help himself. So he'd see the ball and he'd just slide as he'd go towards it. Normally when I'm playing soccer, I focus on the game. But sometimes I do think about my dad and I think about how, what would it have been like if he saw me playing soccer? That would have been nice. Yeah. There will be like instances when I think, 
Wow, I didn't realize how much we played this one game or how many times we watched the Broncos on Sundays. But when it when I do think about it, it's only for a few seconds at a time. I try to um, not really think about um, that we don't have any more time together. I just think about how lucky I was to have those nine years in the first place. Sometimes I do get kind of sad that he's just... I don't remember that much about him and how he didn't, he wasn't through my life for that many years, so I didn't even know him that well. Emotionally, I think he struggles with trying to remember Zach. You know, he'll come up and he'll say, Mom, did Dad have like a soft beard? Like his beard was soft, wasn't it? It was really cozy. And I'll say, yes, it was, it was really cozy. And so he'll just, he'll ask me, to help him remember, and I do. So I have a friend, and she sometimes comes into Chick-fil-A where I work, and she will order milkshakes, and then like she'll go sit down with her dad and just like sit there for an hour. And my dad and I used to do that every single Tuesday. We'd sit in the same booth every time, order the same thing, We'd get a brownie and a chocolate milkshake, and then we would like split everything in half, like to the exact. And then we would sit there and talk for however long it was. I remember just being so happy to be out with my dad and in public, like everyone knowing, hey, I'm with my dad, and this is my dad, and look how cool my dad is. I was just so close to him, and I would just, I lapped up every single moment that I could spend with him, because it was honestly my favorite thing to do. When Zach first was diagnosed with cancer, um, one thing we really focused on was keeping the kids on the same page. We would turn the TV off after dinner, the kids would get ready for bed, and we would just sit on the couch and he would say, ask me anything. We would ask him all these questions about what was gonna happen when you die. Are you going to see us? Are, are we gonna be okay? Is Jesus still gonna love us? What's heaven gonna be like? Are you gonna see people in heaven? We weren't sure that he was gonna survive, so if we had any questions to ask him, he just wanted to hear them so that he can answer before he was gone. He just provided us with answers that still stick to me today and really just helped me because of the fact that I know he believed in this, and so I know that I can believe in it too. It changed the way I looked at things when he actually did end up dying because then I wouldn't have thought that anything was for the greater good, but unless he told me that it was. So it really, it, it changed a lot for me. That was a gift because uh, they grieved a lot differently because of that. They kind of already knew the answers to the questions that would pop in their heads. So it was a very special time. Typically, some of the hardest days that I have, raising the kids by myself, going to work, getting them home, whatever it looks like, some of the hardest, hardest days end up being some of the best days because I desperately seek God in those moments. And He always shows Himself to me, always. And sometimes it can be something I read in my quiet time. It could be something I hear on the radio. It could be a really nice text message I received from a friend. He never lets me sit in that moment of grief and sorrow and frustration and pain. Partly because he's so good, he's such an amazing God, but also because I desperately tried when I'm feeling in that moment to call out to him and to seek him and to ask for his help. He always does. And some of the most unconventional ways you can think of, like a sunset, which sounds so cheesy, or something my kids will say that is just a sweet reminder that I've got this with his help. My mom is a crazy, awesome person. And the fact that she was able to go through this astounds me because 
I only lost a dad and she lost a husband. And I don't know which one is worse, but they're certainly different. I've just, it's kind of weird to say this, but I've just watched her grow so much. Like I know a mom's supposed to say that about her kids, but kids not really like, but spiritually especially, like she's the strongest person I know. My sister Lizzie is definitely um, like a second mom to me. She really helps me with a lot of things. Like she wakes me up in the morning. She um, helps me get breakfast. I don't like, I'm not necessarily a parent to them, but I'm definitely like something different than a sister because I don't, I don't know what it is. Like it's not really, it's kind of a unique animal of its own. It's not really a parent or a sibling relationship as much. I don't know, she's just always so nice to me and she lets me hang out. She's, she was kind of like my dad, actually. There's a lot of mornings where I'll come out from my room and she's made breakfast and has Luke's water bottle and his snack bag. And it's just really special that she does that. Boys, it's time for breakfast. Get downstairs. OK, coming. <laughs> We try to talk about Zach a lot. You know, I try to make him very present in our dinner conversation and our day-to-day -day conversation. And I always try to remind the kids that he would be so proud of what they're accomplishing and who they are and how they love Jesus and, and that they've seen purpose in all of this. And they all have done that. I mean, they've been so great about um, not thinking that it was an, happened by accident or that there wasn't a reason for it. I think they all see great purpose in, you know, their dad and what's happened and that Jesus is just making it something wonderful that can be wonderful. I mean, not having my dad is not a bad gift at all because it helped other people. He made such a big impact on so many people's lives and um, really did a lot for, um, one specific good, which was to bring people to Jesus, which was in all his life goal, which I think he ended up accomplishing. God sacrificed his life for many people, and my dad kind of did that also. So when I think about it that way, it kind of makes me feel good. When God works things together, he works it together for my good. And he's not just trying to put things in my life to make it interesting. He's not putting things in your life to make it tragic. He's working it together for your good. At Zach's funeral, Perry said um, that if he could say anything that he would think Zach would want other, all of us to hear, it was, I'm done, you're not, get to work. And I just remember one day it hit me like, I'm not done. And it's, what does that look like for me? It's not over. It was for Zach, but it's not for me. What does that mean? And I don't think that I'm done figuring that out yet. I can't sit here right now and tell you I fully understand what the best is yet to come means. But I do know that it's hopeful because God promises it. And I don't have to figure out what that looks like yet. I just have to believe that that promise is true, and I do. And that keeps me going every day. Recently, I was in Israel, and as I was sitting on top of Mount Arbel, you can see over the Sea of Galilee. And that's the place where Jesus sat, and he had gone up there to pray. And while he was up there praying, a huge storm came across the sea and the disciples were in a boat on the Sea of Galilee. And they were in the middle of this huge storm. And Jesus could see them from exactly where he was sitting. Um, he, he had left them to go up and pray, but he had never taken his eyes off of them. And in that moment, I realized through my storms, through what I've been through, he has never taken his eyes off of me, off of my kids, off of my family. He's always been there, even when I don't understand why things are happening and I might not feel that he's right there next to me, he's never taken his eyes off me. Zach died 
and we had to learn how to grieve. And it was hard, and it's still hard. But God loves us so much. And as I was standing in front of the empty tomb, I saw hope because Jesus wasn't there. God did exactly what he said he was going to do. And that gives me hope for today, and it gives me hope for me and my kids in the future. Because the tomb is empty, I can deal with the grave that is not. And four years later, full of hope and confidence, I can say that God is still God, and God is still good, and to God be the glory. Thank you.